session, uh, one session in the Gargi and another in the Maitri session. This is the Maitri auditorium. So uh, we have now, there will be uh, 11 talk will be there. For this, I request uh, Professor Saptarsi Ghos to chair this session. With this, Dr. Vijayanand and Dr. Satish Kumar to uh, chair this session. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, I request Navanita to felicitate our chairperson, Professor Savtarsi Ghosh, with a flower bouquet and a memento. Uh, I request uh, Navanita ma'am to just uh, hand over the memento to Professor Ghosh. Nivita ma'am. I request Sangeeta Saha to felicitate with the power bouquet and a memento to our Dr. Uh, Vijayanand, Deputy Librarian, IIT Kanpur. Now I request Deepan Nita to felicitate our guest, reporter Dr. Satish Kumar, Deputy Librarian, IIT, ISM Dhanbad, Deepan Nita, with memento. Okay, yeah. yeah. Uh, I hand over this uh, session to Professor Ghosh. Yeah. Uh, I hand over this uh, session to Professor Ghosh uh, to uh, take over this session. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, well, good afternoon to all of you. So uh, this is the fourth session and parallel session is going on in the next auditorium. So, and this particular program was to be chaired by Professor Manoj Sina, DLH in view. So I'm rather giving the proxy of this one. So as because I am having the duty of being the rapporteur general and at the same time I'm having that one. So uh, this is the demand of the time as because we already lost 10 minutes from our schedule. So first of all, I'm saying that on this particular session, we are having 11 papers, whatever I'm seeing, 11 papers. So just let me know that one, how many of you are present? So first is Miss Sati, if you are there, okay, fine. Second, Unnan Jyoti Choudhury. So I think, uh, so you are, you are there, no? So, okay. So, and third is, Samarjit, De and Nivedita, oh, you will be presenting, fine. Then Gagan Thakuriya, okay, fine. Onimesh Mahata, so I see. Five, Risk Factor, so, okay, sorry, Disha Roy, okay, fine. So then Lamin Gayang and S. Ravi Kumar. Okay, okay, oh, sorry, sorry. So Arushi Nigam. Present. And then Shalini Krishnan. Okay. 
then Kumar Sarkar and Madhusudan Haldar. Ranjan Chavan. Nilam Rajan. Oh my God. And Jyoti Bhaval. Okay. Is there like Ranjan Chavan? Are you getting that? Ranjan Chavan. Okay, fine. Sangeeta Sahu and Miss Sangeeta Sahu. Okay, so we are having everyone. So all. Very good afternoon to all of you. It's a privilege to be here uh, in IIT Kharagpur and being a part of this NDLI conference. So before I start, I'm just waiting for my PPT to be settled. Can you just go back to the first slide? No, no, there's one more which has the title. Yes, yes. Uh, this is the topic of my uh, research paper. It's about the state of awareness about digital libraries among the students of border districts of Uttarakhand. Here I mean by border districts is the uh, colleges which are si situated in the Indo-Nepal border of uh, Uttarakhand. And uh, basically there are three districts which are uh, Champawat, Pithoragarh and Udham Singh Nagar which are actually adjacent to the Nepal International Border of India and which fall in Uttarakhand. So next slide please. The objective of the study was to, uh, to, to study about the state of awareness about digital libraries and the study was limited to the government degree colleges of Uttarakhand and um, uh, UG, PG and PhD students were taken for this study. It was a small scale study which was done through Google Forms and the forms were prepared by the researcher uh, itself. Uh, but the, kindly, please just stay in that slide unless I ask you to. So the significance of this study I want to uh, present in this slide. Uh, like, uh, uh, according to the report of the economic survey, we see that the increase in internet subscriptions in rural and urban areas, uh, it shows that in rural areas there's a 100% increase, while in urban areas it's 158%. Fine, I'll do it myself. But still there's a wide, uh, wide gap uh, which we witness in uh, between the digital divide in rural and urban areas. So the concern for writing this paper was uh, uh, what are the impacts of the, this gap and how they are going to impact the optimum use of digital resources in all the colleges of uh, Uttarakhand. The methodology, uh, a survey method was adopted for uh, doing the study and uh, Google Forms were used as tools. Data was recorded online and it was quantitative in nature. Sampling was purposive and the size was 797. Actually, uh, 1,000 students were contacted through Google Forms, but uh, in response, we get only 797 complete responses. So this figure came this way. Percentage analysis was done. Uh, the district-wise sample of uh, the, the district-wise dis uh, distribution of the sample is shown on the right the, the part. Uh, it shows that uh, from Champawar district we had 337 participants. From Pithoragar number of respondents was 316 and from US Nagar it was 144 and uh, uh, 
blue color shows the number of colleges taken and that made a total of 797. Uh, it's a brief description of the sample. 41% uh, students from, uh, were from UG standards while 48% from PG and 11% only from PhD level students were taken. Uh, as far as stream is concerned, uh, our sample comprised 53% arts stream students, 26% science and 21% commerce stream students. Uh, if, if we come to the background, then uh, uh, major 99.6% students were from semi-urban background, 89.6 and 10.4 uh, were from rural background. Uh, this is the data collected and the analysis done afterwards. Internet is available uh, to 95.2%, which makes a huge number, while it's still not available to 4.8% students in the Indo-Nepal border districts of Uttarakhand. Affordability is, uh, fif uh, while asked about the question of affordability of into, uh, in internet, 56.4% students said that it's expensive, while 35.2% responded at affordable and 84 considered it to be cheap. And the quality of internet, only 41.4% uh, of the respondents said that they had a good quality of internet. And the rest is shown in the slide and it's self-explanatory. Internet, how internet is being used was also a concern behind the, stu uh, the study. 47% students uh, said that they use it for two hours on average, while uh, one 26% use it only for t uh, one hour. And more than four hours is being used by 27% of respondents from different streams. Uh, uh, when we uh, talk about the use of internet, it's also import important uh, in uh, in the districts of border areas that do they have uh, appropriate devices to use st uh, study material because while searching uh, study material in internet mobile phones can't be said to be the right choice because uh, having the uh, having uh, a small screen and large radiations coming from so uh, while asked this question 73.4 percent said that they own their personal mobile and that's the only device they use for surfing data even f uh, for their studies and 21.1 uh, percent uh, said that they use their some of their family members mobile phone and that's the only device they own many of the students replied that uh, for all the um, uh, college going students they have just one phone in their house and they use that 3.1 percent uh, have laptops and three percent uh, these are the um, social media sites they surf, uh, YouTube being the largest, having the largest share of 50% and rest. Twitter, none was recorded for Twitter. So these are the social media sites. And uh, every college has college library, but they get very few number of books, mostly two or three. And 70% said that they, they do get books from library, while 30% do not get any books. And then in that case, they use internet for study material, and 98% said that they use uh, they make use of internet. Uh, but this is interesting to note that only 52, it's like nearly 50% on both the sites. 52% have knowledge of digital resources, while 48% do not have any uh, knowledge of digital resources according to the data that we collected. Uh, these were the, this slide shows the source of a uh, source of information about digital resources and the major is uh, given to the teachers. So most of the students got it from the teachers. Uh, these are the digital learning platforms uh, which we asked and uh, only 11% knew about NDLI, 17% knew about Swayam. Enlist is used 0.6% and 62% uh, told us to uh, have that they use some other sources and they consider YouTube to be the okay. Right. So these are the conclusions. Uh, after our study, we concluded that better internet facilities at affordable pr price should be uh, given to the student or they should be provided with that. In this case, colleges can bear the responsibility of providing free Wi-Fi to students. 73.4% uh, of the respondents, they use their personal mobile phones. Uh, as I said earlier, sc small screen is not an appropriate choice of uh, surfing through uh, some study material. And nearly half of the st uh, students near, uh, do not know about digital libraries, which is also a matter of concern. Uh, 
even though who do 99.5 percent only search for the syllabus related topics and there also they they have lack of knowledge about authentic or scholarly material available in internet being the first source of knowledge teachers play important role in making the student know about the digital resources so training of teachers and um, their orientation may also play a very important role in orienting the students about digital learning resources and the study indicates that strong need for supplementing formal college studies with digital uh, r learning resources is required so uh, due to the time constraint i'll conclude thank you so much Any query, you can fire it. So I'll be waiting just one minute, and after that, I'll be switching to the next participant. So most probably, it appears that house is in a negation. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Madam uh, Swati. Finding should be uh, given. No with, uh, it was a wonderful talk okay. from your side with okay. the papers. So next person I uh, from person. our organizing well, teams, one, there is a small person. memento. Uh, just we like to just hand over to uh, Madam Swati. So I request Professor Ghosh to hand over this uh, small memento from our organizing team. Next speaker is uh, Mr. Uh, Munindya Jyoti Chaudhary. He will be presenting on a digital library for visually impaired students, pros and cons. So you make your presentation very precisely okay, within the time. Good afternoon, uh, dignitaries on the dice and my dear friends of the dice. Uh, my paper is Digital Libraries for Visually Impaired Students. Every, actually, we are everyone is concerned with the digital library, digital library. For us, it's okay. But for those who are visually impaired, so there are some uh, something to do. So my paper is covering that fact. Okay, I'll skip this introduction because of time slanging. Research question. Actually, uh, how do the visually impaired st uh, students use e-resource from the digital library? Then, next is what are the different, uh, different sources of information available for visually impaired students? How do digital libraries convert information into the compatible forms of the visually impaired students. What are the technologies and equipment used in digital libraries for visually impaired students? What are the barriers to access those access a digital library by visually impaired students? Are visually impaired students aware about those facilities available access digital library? So actually these are the my question arises in my mind and accordingly I have covered my study. So methodology is, uh, I, this is a completely theoretical paper. I have studied some journals uh, from the Google Scholar and Scholar other sources and uh, some papers from different sources. I also skip this. So the, there are lots of technologies and apps and tools are there for the visually impaired students by using those, they they can use a digital library. So Braille translator is a one of those technology. Rather, we can say some uh, equipments. 
So, for example, uh, Duxbury Braille Translator. This is a very, uh, very useful product by uh, used by the visually impaired students to translate text into Braille or vice versa. And Braille 2000, Braille production technology for the uh, new millennium, this is fully internet ever software and very friendly. Sorry. And then uh, QNFB Reader, this software is uh, developed by National Institute of Blind and uh, Sense, Sense Today. And, we, and uh, this is an uh, award winning soft mobile apps by using impaired person which Covered text speech to the Braille and Liplosis. This is also an uh, sources Braille translator developed in uh, languages uh, in C languages. Then sc screen reader. There are some softwares by which the screen text will convert into the speech. So, for example, like non-visual desktop access (NDVA). This is of Free and open access portable screen reader, micros, uh, screen reader for Microsoft Windows, and uh, this is uh, developed with Python and C++. This uh, this is available in 62 languages in the world. This is very simple and easy to use. And then other is uh, Invision app. This is a free app for the smartphones for the sp smartphone. Actually, I'm feeling difficulty to see the screen from here. <laughs> so no problem. I, I need a display over here, so that's why I could not present my presentation quietly. Okay, I skipped all those. There are lots of uh, apps and te te uh, technologies are there by which we can convert text into Braille or speech. Um, so these all are the some equipments by which we can scan those text and it convert into the speech by which the uh, visually impaired students can access digital library, digital information from internet. Like, I'll come to the, directly to the barriers. These are also one of the screen magnification. Actually, some low vision peoples are there who cannot read out the small text. For them, we can enlarge those texts and we can, uh, they, they can uh, easily access those screen. So these are the examples of the, some screen readers, screen magnifiers. So I'm not reading all those. And there are some, uh, there are some libraries who really works for the visually impressed students. One is Bookshare and another is Sugamma uh, Pustakalaya. They are having a very good collection of audio books and, uh, and others. So they, the visually impressed students can get information from these two libraries. And organization, there are lots of organizations working on this. And some are like American Academy of Optophology, American Council for Blind, and these are, I am not reading all those. Lots of NGOs are also working on in this field. And barriers, and basically I am reading this. What are the barriers? Why we are not getting this kind of information or technologies in common? So like lack of vision of the vision by the library to serve visually impaired students. Actually, me myself was also one of the librarian, but uh, I don't know uh, why we are not working on those. Maybe the percentage of the user is less. That's why is one of the reasons. Probably I'm not sure. And then lack of the uh, coordination between the NGOs and the other organization with the libraries. Actually, there are lots of organi organization NGOs who are working for the. Uh, blind people or the visually impaired people, but the libraries and those NGOs are not uh, working together. Probably that is also one of the barrier. And then collection development policy uh, in favor of visually uh, for impaired person. Actually in our called libraries, we are basically goes for the, the common people. So the collection develop policy is also made on emphasis on those injuries. But uh, for, we forgot about those. Uh, visually impaired students. That is also one of the barrier. Lack of user users training and awareness program, and then lack of alternate forms of information sources. Then language barriers. This is a common barrier because in India, lots of languages are there. If someone pro uh, develop a program, then uh, because of this language also, we, that cannot be fulfilled. 
the language barrier is also one of the most important barriers to access those information. Maximum, f uh, minimum fund allocation for the libraries to serve for those people. Actually, we all librarians, so we might we, we, we know about this the fund problem, and then not easily available these products. These products are we need to uh, study more depth. Then only we will know about this thing. It's not easily available, and other is complex web design uh, with the images and symbols. Whatever technologies come out, that images and symbols are cannot convert can, but it's difficult to convert it into video, uh, audios. So tech, only text can uh, convertible. So in our website design, website, lots of symbols and images are using for those, uh, for, for which the visually impaired students can face difficulty to access those information. Uh, this, I, in my study, I found these are only, uh, this conclusion. So thank you. Actually, I could not present my paper properly because of that screen problem, so for, forgive me. <laughs> thank you, thank you. All, 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 all. Actually, I'm, I have collected this data uh, from school students also in Assam. I am from Assam. In Assam, there is a school, blind school. I visit that school. I met the students. I collected from that those what are the softwares they are using. They shown me they have a software in their mobiles by which they they access those information or they operate those mobiles very easily. Uh, so you can target, you can take target from all students right from the school to the senior one. Yes, yes, yes. Ba maximum, whatever I have given, that, that maximum are open sources and easily available. <laughs> correct. Correct, correct, correct. correct. Sir. Thank you, sir. Sorry, sir. Sorry. I have written, I have written the some organizations are working there. I have mentioned that, but I have not read out those. It's there in the some slide. Thank you, Mr. Chaudhary. Uh, now I request uh, Dr. Vijayanand to hand over a memento to Mr. Chaudhary. have to take that one out rather we have to be optimistic one but what uh, the previous speaker told that one so seeing that one that is the screen from this particular position is a problem okay so I'm sorry for that one as well because of myself being the chair so I haven't act, uh, thought of that one previously but see uh, everyone uh, let me clear one thing okay so myself as well as all of you. I think you know the basics of library and information science, so there is no such necessity to tell that one like that because we are very much eager to know that one, what you did, what is the insight you have presented, and what is the ultimate goal. That is the op optimal thing that we want. There is no such necessity to reinventing the wheel. Please allow me to do that one because it is also a big problem for me each and every time to move my shoulder right hand side and to give you warning for one and two and three. So this is not a good thing also. Thank you very much. So next is uh, Nivedita and you. Okay, come. So you are Samarjit Deh. Okay, thank you very much. Good afternoon all the chairpersons and all the delegates and my friends. Uh, we know that after COVID and the pandemic, uh, how the physical, after the shut down the physical libraries, how the libraries are survived to continue their library services and uh, we come to, we come to physical to digital library. And uh, <coughs> for that period, in COVID period and after COVID era, so many, so many articles and books are published uh, in digital inclusions 
and digital li library related. <coughs> For that, uh, users uh, need that some explore that how the digital inclusions and digital libraries are development in this COVID-19 pandemic. For that, my topic is uh, digital inclusion and digital libraries during the COVID-19 and the post-COVID era. Uh, for my presentation, I uh, divided the, my presentation of the following uh, facets, a uh, background of the study and overview uh, of, of digital life services, objectives, uh, research methodology, and uh, research and discussion I uh, faceted by uh, facet was OH distribution, uh, ER OH distribution, distribution of literature during and uh, post COVID-19, country wise distribution of the literature and uh, journal wise distribution, uh, library type wise distribution, a process of for further research and conclusion. <coughs> this uh, study basically a uh, literature review based uh, uh, study and here I uh, here I facetted the uh, digital inclusion, digital library, COVID-19 pandemic, uh, library services in COVID-19 <coughs> period and digital information literacy related uh, articles I study here to come to the conclu conclusion overview of digital library services. Uh, the libraries are uh, provided several digital library services uh, in this period. Uh, first one, the information and retrieval services, content access and download services, interlibrary loan services, reference services, metadata services, preservation services, accessibility services, educational services, licensing and copyright services. Object, now we have come to the objectives of this study. Uh, first one, the literature published during and after the COVID-19 outbreak on digital inclusion and digital libraries, the initiatives and their importance. Uh, the facet-wise uh, di distribution, ER-wise, country-wise, journal-wise, and library type-wise distribution of literature. How there has been significant differences in the literature and how it will impact the libraries in the future. Uh, for this study, I followed uh, the methodology. First, the database selection, I selected, selected uh, two below fee databases, uh, Scopus and Webassens, and Google Scholar search engine. Then I searched the literatures uh, using the keywords di digital inclusion, digital uh, libraries in the COVID period, and I applied the different filters and search study strategy like uh, Boolean strategy, and I using the limitations of period selection the related literatures from for my topics I remove the duplicate I check the duplicacy and remove the duplicates analyze the contents I and I divide the uh, all literature all 87 literatures uh, through facet eight facet analysis after that I analyze the results in different uh, facets <coughs> ER wise distribution distribution of literature during and post COVID journal wise distribution and library type wise distribution Now we come to the results and discussions. Uh, first one, uh, total 87 literatures, uh, I divide into eight several facets. The most of the li literature, 57 number of literatures are come to the digital library services. And uh, nine uh, number of literature come to the digital literacy program for digital library uses. Five are come to the digital library and the users needs. Another five come to the digital library services through remote access, another fourth come to the digital library <coughs> reconstruction, another three comes to the digital library program using social media, and another two comes to the digital library and ICT infrastructure in libraries, another two comes to the digital and redesigning of the library websites. This is the ERO's distribution, first I uh, select the <coughs> ERO's this 2020 is, is come to March 2020 to December and the last 2023 it comes to uh, January 2023 to August 2023 and the distribution of literature during and post COVID-19 I divide in two period one the COVID-19 period and another one post COVID-19 this COVID-19 period I mentioned up to 
February 2022 because the first wave come to the March 2020 and the last one, third one, it's come to the January 2022 for that I mentioned that one as a COVID-19 period and after post-COVID I mentioned from after the third wave to till now. And this uh, COVID-19 literatures are mostly focused on the uh, how to develop the uh, infrastructure of the library, digital library and how to uh, re reconstruct on their existing digital library services. And the post-19 literatures are mostly, um, mostly focused on the digital library services and the usage. This is the, it comes to the uh, country-wise distribution where the, all that uh, uh, from 87 literatures uh, maximum are uh, represent some uh, country-wise, uh, like some uh, countries, institution, uh, public libraries, uh, libraries and the users. Most of the, most of the literatures uh, are studied in the country, India it's 17, another 115 literatures on uh, United States and 10 Pakistan and many more and two, two literatures are to the uh, comparative stud study between two countries and uh, first one the Indonesia and the Malaysia and another one the China between China and Italy. <coughs> this is the journal wise distribution. Uh, the 87 literatures are come to the come under the 35 journals. Here I mentioned the two and above published journals. It's 11 and another 24 uh, four uh, journals <coughs> name I didn't mention here. And uh, this most of the uh, literatures are published in digital library services. It's 17 and the second one 16 literatures in library philosophy and practice. Next, uh, we come to the point, uh, the library type wise distribution. The, the most of the most of the literatures are based on academic library library, and then second one eight <coughs> is public library related, another three one special library, and others means is user study or other related is sixteen total eighty seven. Uh, with the most of the comes to the sixty academic library, it's called, means. The more uh, we know how the academic library libraries are survived the COVID-19 situation to continue their library services <coughs> in the digital okay. world. Okay, Chalo. conclusion. Okay. Uh, this is the conclusion. The pandemic demonstrated that digital libraries are not just repository of knowledge, but also powerful tools for bridging in the digital divide. It is imperative to recognize that digital inclusion is not just a response to a crisis, but an ongoing commitment to ensure the, that everyone has the opportunity to participate fully in our increasingly digital world. Academic libraries were affected more after the shutdown of physical libraries. They tried to survive the situation by introducing emerging tools and techniques. Most of the literature suggest that we must be aware of developing our existing library infrastructure to survive future emergencies. In the COVID period, the majority of the literature focused on how library staff has adapted new tools and technology to deliver digital library services as well as how to manage library services during the pandemic. The post-COVID literature emphasizes the use of digital libraries and the construction of digital library infrastructure for unforeseen circumstances. If you have Thank that you. long conclusion, it will be very hard to conclude anything, you know. That is the big problem. That happened to your presentation, you know. You are, it's okay, you are having problems. So, I am just saying you two things. You just go to the objective slide. Go to the objective slide. And go for the second objective. Okay, you are here. So now read the second objective. Is it the objective or research question? Because you started with how, but there is no question mark. So just tell me that one, whether this is the objective or rather research question. Actually, this, I want to come to the, this 
And the object is, I want to know the ERH yeah, distribution of the literature and country-wise, how literatures are published, or how okay, works fine. are done. So, so, so you have the answer, but this thing never gives us that one. So, uh, it is not having the question, it is not having that, it started with a question mark. Okay, now go to the next slide. Next slide. Now here, you see, both three and four are having five ranks, but why you are saying that one, first one is three, second one is four? How you decided that one, this will be three and four? What's that? This one, this three and this four, huh. both are having five. Yes, sir. Okay. So how you are saying that one, this will be, first one will be four, second one will be five. I have seen that one while you were presenting, I already checked that one. Okay. So how you got that one? Why you are not saying that on the last one will be one, five, second one will be four? So this is the problem of serial number. This is the ranking, you know. You have to go with that one. Thank you very much. Now it's not that enough time to talk about this one. Thank you very much. Thank okay. you. So, so, okay, sir, you please come for the next one. Uh, thank you, Samarjit. Thank you, Samarjit. Now I request uh, Dr. Satish Kumar to hand over a moment to So the next person is uh, Gagan Takuria. The title of the uh, paper is Uses of E-Resources in University Libraries with Special References to KKH Library, Gavati University. Everyone, pass. I am going to present my paper. Digital libraries' uh, main functions are e-resources. So, how extends e-resources may fulfill the sustainable development? goal for quality education. My member is going to prove it. And my paper is use of e-resources in university libraries with special reference to KK Handling Library, Guwahati University. And I'm going to say about objectives. My objective is that to make awareness of the e-resources, use of e-resources for knowledge development and sustainable development, to prove the impression of the e-resources in the library, to find out the prospect and problems to study the satisfaction level of the e-resources. Research methodology. I have used the research methodology. The study is based on a sample questionnaire to realize the responsiveness and practice of the e-resources among the faculty, research scholar, and students from different departments of Guwahati University. 
A questionnaire was used for 150 users asking about awareness, frequent uses, satisfaction, place of use, and so on. Random sampling was applied for data collections. Some internal data was collected by interview and personal observations. Next. About Krishnakanda Handic Library. The library of Goat University was established in 1948 to pro provide the educational needs of the students, teachers, and research scholars of the university. The library also stature of e resources. 75 glorious years old library, about 3 lakhs of print document collections. The library takes the initiative to collect e resources by subscribing and making consortia with different institutions like Infibnet, NDL, Proquest, etc. Resources of KK Handic Library, Guwahati University. Our KK Handic Library resources are e journals, e thesis, e books, and databases. And some databases Institute of Studies in Industrial Development, JGET Plus. Math Science Net, Web of Science, and Monopatra and Scopus. Data analysis. Uses, uses reports of e resources as given in the uh, table below. In the table, uh, we see that in the above report is we found that the mostly of the use of e-resources from JSTOR, the library has provided a user ID and e password to use the e-resources and publish a link from remote access and the help of the EJ proxy link. Users can access the uh, e-resources from home also. Frequency of the library visit. It is found from the uh, diagram that 35% of the users of the KK Handic Library visit monthly and 30% are daily, 22% are weekly and only 13% visited library rarely. Awareness of the library e-resources. The awareness of the library resources, 92% means most of the students known about the library resources. But there is a group of who have to know about the resources. Location used for resources. The uh, diagram shows that use of library 70% and 52% used to in the home by using the remote access link and 30% users uh, use the resources in the department. Type of resources mostly used. In the above uh, diagram, we found that 61% of online databases are the most valuable resources. After that, 35% given most valuable resources are e-journals. 30% of users says uh, thesis and dissertations, 22% e-books and 22% online courses and tutorials, and 22% educational website and 13% others. Most valuable e-resources uh, shows online databases are most valuable in 
a user says their online database are most valuable e-resources. Advantage of e-resources. Uh, <laughs> barrier to the e-resources. Satisfaction level. Findings. Uh, in findings, uh, first of all, almost all users are aware of e-resources. Most of the users are using e-resources. E-resources are used for academic purpose. It is a good sign that most of the users are using e-journals. It means they are concerned about recent topics. The postgraduate students and the research scholars regularly visit the website. JSTOR and Sodgonga. They are e-journals and uh, they e search e-journals and e theses They use library databases and get the re required resources. They are satisfied with the e-resources of the library. They sur this survey found out that the perceived benefit of the e-resources anytime can be accessed. It has a wide range of content. Anybody can find the rare materials. E-resources have some barriers, lack of technical knowledge, proper guidance at, and trainings. Most of the resources have access restrictions. It has become known that KK Handling Library is sort of e-resources, so it, it was suggested by the users to expand the digital collections and should have an open access initiative. Suggestions are that the enhanced to the collection of e-resources, the library should be fully digitized. The library should take initiative for the awareness of the users about the e-resources and their use. The internet connectivity should not be interrupted. To solve the subscriptions issues, KK Handic Library has to enhance e-resources with global collaborative and local collabor collaborative platforms should be raised. Conclusion, the research paper studied the view of 80 research scholars and postgraduate students of different departments of Guwahati University relating to the awareness of the e-resources, availability, accessibility, use of e-resources, benefit of the e-resources, challenges and barriers, satisfaction level and its future expectation. It is found that e-resources are used for academic purpose. Most of the users use e-journals for their studies. The trend shows that users want to know the recent topic. With the advancement of technology, e-resources become more popular. Users like to use the e-resources. Though e-resources have some barriers like technical knowledge, lack of awareness, and training, training KK Handling Library provide e-resources to users. Most of the users are satisfied. It is suggested by the users to enhance the collection of e-resources. And prospect of future research, there are 22 numbers of university in Assam, central, state, and private. Use, user satisfaction is never-ending topic with the senses of technology and research area become globalized. Thank you. Okay, very good. Thank you. So, uh, would you please go to your objectives, please? Just go to the objective slide. Yeah. Just to go to the objective slide. I just want to make this one a bit interactive because people are having a bit of nap also. I'm seeing that one. Some people are having uh, that one. So, I just want to give you some kind of filler so that you can actually be with you. That is something is going on. Okay, the objective itself. Yes. Now you see number four to find out the prospects and problems. I mean, there are problems. I'm coming to that one. And whatever you are saying in conclusion, all of you, you say, most of the users are satisfied. Whenever most are satisfied, what is why why you are inviting? 
problem again to identify the problem and you are trying to so even if you identify the problem when you are, most of your users are already satisfied what is the utility of doing again to find out the problems and even if you find out the problem do you really think that one there is a solution for that one right now whatever this study is the first study made for kekandik university or rather some other studies were also there did you get my point problem is you are rather going for the two different aspects one is the prospect and second one is the just reverse one so you are trying to get that one but whatever you told us all are prospects because i have seen that one uh, that is 13% are only not saying saying bad all others are saying good 80% users are satisfied lastly in conclusion you also said that one most of them are satisfied so if everyone is satisfied or rather majority is satisfied why are you inviting problems again do you have any answer for that okay might be i am also asking some bizarre questions thank you very much thank so you. so next you sir come please so next is i think panimesh thank you very much gagan now i'd like to request uh, psm sir to hand over the memento to mr PSM gagan sir, the next speaker is uh, mr animesh mahata the title of the paper is uh, the role of digital libraries on sustainable development in education a study of kendriya vidyalaya libraries thank you sir most honorable chair co chair reporter learned dignitaries ladies and gentlemen my paper deals with the role of kendriya vidyalaya libraries on sustainable development in education next slide please the study objective of the study is to explore the usefulness next slide please to explore the usefulness of kb libraries for attaining sustainable development in quality education to know the impact of kb libraries on various sustainable development goals to develop more indicators in school level to achieve sustainable development in quality education to develop more indicators to integrate broader global agenda for sustainability into the education and practices at school level the methodology is the paper is based on personal observation and experimentation for a long time 2003 to 2023 in three kendriya vidyalaya libraries at different times descriptive information is gathered from observation and from official record of kevich experimental information is provided by controlling and restricting services interaction with students at uh, three levels upper primary secondary and senior secondary and also teachers of kevich interaction with other library professional of other kevich data collection extracted report extracted reports from e granthalaya database up to kevich and manual library record of 1k gathered data by kevi login of ubi portal up to kevich 
and from manual admission record of 1KB for demographic details of users. Collected data from other librarians, 20 librarians. Collected feedback from 300 students of my own KB. To analyze the effectiveness of library resources, grade level, age, gender, and societal background of users have been taken into account. Due to con time constraint, I actually omit the analy analysis of the data just coming to findings, these findings, <coughs> sustainable development in quality education. KB libraries are promoting inclusive and equitable education, ensuring access for all, fostering lifelong learning, serve as vital uh, hub of knowledge and learning, integrate learning with sustainable development topic, such as critical issues, on environmental conservation, social equity, and economic development, integrating social responsibility through Pushtak Upahar program. Other su sustainable development goals in connection with quality education and poverty, Pushtak Upahar program gives relief to students or parents of marginalized section. Gender equality, SDG 5 gender gap and gender disparity is reducing by equitable access to library resources. Reduced inequality, reducing disparity by ensuring equal access to library resources for students from different socioeconomic and demographic groups. Now that Technology integration, digital initiatives are advanced cataloging and circulation systems are followed. Easier searching of libraries are uh, OPEC, OEB OPEC. There are some e-resources, blog, website, e granthalaya apps, using NDLI resources, digital library under PM3, e Frajna. Our future goals are, these are not uh, presently, we are not providing these services. Uh, we are trying procurement of diverse digital and e-resources, digitalized variable, uh, valuable resources, high-speed internet connection to facilitate smooth access to e-resources, recycling program partnership with NGOs and private sector organization implement a system to track the library's environmental impact. Actually, we face the challenges only one professional staff uh, can be having, library staff. Budget constraints for eco-friendly technologies, resistance to change, the need for staff training on sustainable practices, effective communication effort, efforts, students from different and diverse background. Sir. Sustainable development in edu education involves promoting long-term societal and environmental well-being, integrating environmental awareness into curricula, fostering critical thinking on global issue, and preparing students for a sustainable future. KB Library plays a crucial role in sustainable development in education by serving as repo repository of information and fostering a learning environment. Thank you. I'm not going to ask any question because the parallel session is going on and it is unparallelly being uh, ended, you know. So, so I, I'm, not, I'm not going to take that pride of continuing this one. So I'm not going to ask any questions. So better you go with the rituals. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Animes. Now I request Arup sir to, to please, please come and just uh, present a memento to Mr. Animes.
Good afternoon, all dignitaries on the dais and of the dais and my fellow participants. Myself, Bikram Roy, student, Department of Library Information Science, uh, North Bengal University, along with my co-author, Disha Roy, and our mentor and co-author, Dr. Shabtu Shighosh, Professor, Department of Library Information Science. <laughs> our uh, paper entitled, Risk Management, and ethical issues uh, of digital library software, uh, comparative assessment. One of the main risks in digital library software is to assure the um, assure the security of the data. Uh, it's uh, very. Uh, um, it's very essential uh, for the institution to implement robust security uh, measures to uh, protect their data from hackers and um, uh, ensure privacy for their users. Greenstone, DSpace, and the ePrints are three open source digital library software which are taken into the consideration for this paper. Uh, for this paper. Here's the objectives of this study. To resolve or avoid the challenges and risk for governance and ethical issues in digital library software, to trace access assurance of digital data usage, to find compatibility and interoperability issues in digital library software, and to identify potential threat and their mitigation using add-ons. So to uh, support the objectives, the previous objectives, we try to follow the this methodology. First, previously mentioned softwares are evaluated based on these uh, parameters like interoperability, compatibility, and security. Then, we try to, based on this parameter, we try to identify the best one. And then after this, after this process, uh, those three measures have been considered for the technical enhancement. Those three measures, third party add-on, ethical consideration, and security enhancement. And in that, in that process uh, of security measurement analysis for the chosen one, some gaps have been found and external security support is added to bridge those gaps. Next. So next, uh, Despite differences in architecture and presentation, the three software packages meet all the broader goals, goals of digital library. There are uh, three of the, these software are di differently helpful in building a repository for various kind of institutions according to their need. After going through previously mentioned methodology and exhaustive literature search, along with practicing various function modules of these three DLS digital library software. By installing them, we identified strength and flaws of this tool for their activity in, their, in the library. So under these uh, facts, we compared, the, uh, compared these uh, three digital libraries uh, like in the Compatibility issues, there are plugins, extends, software platforms. In software platforms, we faced some difficulties uh, in ePrints as it was difficult to uh, install in Windows system. Next, next we have interoperability, uh, interoperability issues uh, and then next, next. we have security issues and uh, like encryption mechanism and user authentication and authorization. So based on those uh, comparison, there are some outcomes of the study and those are. We try to find out the suitable one, but it's very difficult to uh, suitable uh, find one, only one um, digital library software over another, uh, over another. Uh, so we try to focus on specific feature uh, to compare this. Uh, and for interoperability, all three of this has uh, op uh, OAI PMH uh, um, facility, but only Greenstone has uh, the Z39.50 protocol. Pro 
protocol. Uh, also, DSpace supports the open URL protocol, which uh, links uh, each item page data object inmates and uh, MPEG21 digital item declaration language. Uh, for uh, authorization and authentication, um, did, uh, for, uh, in this space, for a single session, there is a logging uh, facility with, uh, with speci special um, password. Uh, and, for, um, and, for, uh, and for encryption, uh, this space has superior functionality for encryption data. Even e prints e uh, provide in encryption, uh, but it also allows, but it all, and, and on, in for uh, digital preservation, uh, only uh, this space has the uh, long term digital preservation facility. And here's the conclusion of our study, and the references are there. Thank you. Thank you. After evaluating the so softwares, we can suggest DSpace. It's, it, it's very what suitable to handle repositories as well as it's very suitable. Huh? Uh, yes, it, is in, it was in conclusion.